Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel for today's video. You know what time it is. It's Natasha Denona time. I'm going to be reviewing the Natasha Denona Zendo palette that just released. So if you want to hear my thoughts on this, then just keep watching. And you might want to watch this because it might save you some money. Let's find out. <laughs> Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all the new makeup on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys. Hair is a little bit crazy because I taught outside for eight hours today, but nothing's gonna stop me because as soon as I got home, when there is a new Natasha Denona palette, I gotta get to business. And so many of you guys messaged me saying that you were waiting for my review to make your decision on whether or not to purchase this palette. I don't take that feat lightly. I take my job very seriously, so. I got some explaining to do about this palette. Now, today's review is going to feature this look and also another look because the first look completely failed. So it's like one and a half looks. I feel the need to keep creating looks with this palette, so keep an eye out for that if I do decide to do that because I gotta explain myself. So let's talk about this palette. It is currently available on the Natasha Denona website where I pre-ordered it from. And if you wanna get your palettes early, I've discovered Natasha Denona's website on the pre-orders, she actually ships them out before they are actually launched, which is abnormal for a brand to do. And I love that. I got it nice and quickly. I'm really excited about it. The website though can be expensive as far as shipping goes, depending on how much you spend. If you don't spend the minimum, shipping was expensive. I didn't spend the minimum. And in that case, then I would recommend shopping from Sephora, though you might have to wait a couple days extra. I'm sure returning is easier and also you might get it quicker. The depending on where you live. But anyways, it is also available on the Sephora website if you didn't collect that. But let's get into the details of the palette. So this is a $65 palette, meaning it is her midi size. So she has a really big like maxi size, which is like 200 something dollars. Then her pretty typical size for her palette is gonna cost you around $130. This is one of those $130 palette sizes. And then she goes down to literally half the price for $65 for literally half the quantity and all of us makeup lovers and makeup hoarders, we like paying less for less product. It's literally half the amount of product for the same exact number of colors. Everything about this midi size, I feel like changed her business. Everybody loves this palette. It's a great way to try her formula without spending too much and I feel like this is still the perfect amount of product so I hope she continues to come out with a lot of these palettes. I like these a lot better and it's based off her little mini size which is $25 but we'll get into the mini size in a second. Online she says this is a warm tone palette inspired by the mini Zendo with hues of pink, brown, Brown, coral and peach with a pop of turquoise which is definitely in that palette now what Zendo stands for the theme of this palette is like Zen earthy earth fire air water that kind of situation you can see that within the color story here now let's talk about the packaging it's kind of a warm toned color packaging as always you have your little pinholes to stick through so that you can get the colors out and rearrange them nice big mirror and then of course you're going to reveal the 15 shades that are in this palette again we're talking about those elements water air, earth, fire, you definitely see it all here. I probably said those elements wrong. You get the gist. Now, it is inspired by the mini Zendo palette which came out first. And normally when she does these duos, I feel like I can see the inspiration one palette to the next. I don't really see the inspiration from the mini Zendo palette if I'm being honest. Yeah, it has like coral-ish colors and the Zendo you're playing on that cool toned, warm toned mix, which I thought made this palette awkward. Side note, I don't like the mini Zendo palette. I've never liked it. I always thought it was awkward to create a cohesive look using all five of these colors. Like I would like the cool tone look I would get with this and then I would like just pairing in these two warm tone colors. But when I would mix them up, I always felt like the look was just awkward and this to me just was never a cohesive color story for being a little 5 p.m. palette but nonetheless other people liked it I guess I didn't like it and so when this palette came out I kind of felt the same I felt like the color story wasn't cohesive enough I like a nice mix of warm to cool tone but even when I was creating my looks today you'll see I felt like these colors paired kind of weird together as far as the formulations go you get eight mattes 
seven shimmers. Within the matte formula, four of those mattes are going to be her cream to powder formula, which you'll see in my demo later on. I actually really think she's improved her cream to matte and she's nailed them down because they are so good in her regular matte formula. And within the shimmers, you're not getting a super glittery dimensional shimmer. You're just getting, I would say, six completely regular shimmers. And then you're getting one kind of lid toppery duochrome kind of shade, similar to formulas that you would find in the Love palette in those duochrome kind of lid toppery shimmers. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Taking a deeper look into the color story though, like I said, you have a cool tone panel here and then you have a warm tone panel over here. It's kind of a really big juxtaposition from one side of the palette to the other, which I believe was her intention, but I'm not gonna lie. When I first saw the release of this palette, I didn't instantly fall in love with it. It didn't draw me in. I think the warm tones are too warm and I think the cool tones are too cool to where these two don't really mesh well in a look. And maybe it's just me, maybe I'm weird the way that I look at colors, but I can speak for when I also create the looks, I felt the same. When I tried to create a look with what I call the art eyeshadow barf style, where I try to put as much colors on my eyes as I can just to test the formulas, normally I can be successful because those are palettes that are made for cohesion and normally I don't have problems with that. I had problems with this with my eyeshadow barf kind of look. It literally looked like eyeshadow barf on my eyes. So for me to get to this palette to work to create looks, I really do have to focus on either the cool side or the warm side, which is similar to my experience with the mini Zendo and I'm just not personally crazy about the color stories in here but that's just completely personal preference. What matters about this palette is the quality. You can tell if you're going to like and wear this color story frequently but I did want to mention that if you do have similar preferences to mine that might be a way that you also feel about this palette. Without further ado I am going to get into my tutorials. The first tutorial is going to be my failed tutorial but I still wanted to put it in so you could at least see how the colors applied and my experience with them and get a closer look at that and then we're gonna get into the eye look that I am wearing right now which I do like quite a lot like I think this is cute anyways let's get into it all right you guys so I was testing out the colors and trying to create a look it didn't turn out the best you you can tell I was just trying out the colors and normally the look pulls through but it didn't pull through today but just in case I do want to show you how the colors apply I'm not gonna do lashes or anything because quite frankly <laughs> I don't really recommend trying this look but like I said let me show you how the colors apply we'll start off with breathe right here and I'm gonna put this in the inner corner oh no the lighting's changing again well, luckily this isn't the final look, but you can see this one is really bright. It's a cream to powder formula, and it's definitely lighter on the eyelid, but it's not chalky, which I like because sometimes shades, this color can be chalky. Not chalky. And then I went into Relief right here, which is a little bit more pinky. And this is gonna be the mid-tone color. And as you can see, it packs a lot of pigment. So use a light hand if you want the soft pinky coral color that you see in the pan. But very, very pigmented. Oh my gosh, you guys, this look is not cute. <laughs> but I was testing the quality, and that I did. And then I wanted to try this cream to powder formula. So we're using Mindful right here, which is Again, like I said, another cream to powder formula. So I'm going to blend this in and she's really mastered these cream to powder formulas because I used to strongly dislike these from her, but they have the perfect amount of pigmentation that's not overwhelming and is still really blendable. And here's where things in the look went south. I don't really like how these pair, but I'm taking Zeal which is an army green color, which looks good if you're sticking to this side of the palette. I'm, I tried to combine the sides of the palette and mix the warm and cool tones. And for this look, I wasn't jiving with it, but very pigmented and very easy to blend. So the mattes, as always, from Nat are exceptional. I had to use Yama right here, which is that gorgeous kind of green gold duochrome that's still wearable. This is a bit more lid toppery. You can see it. I just know that Natasha has such a good creamy shimmer formula. This isn't giving it to me. I just would have liked to have seen more from it. It's just too lightweight for me. Needs more pigment. And then I went in with Flow right here. These shimmers aren't knocking my socks off. They're really, really good, but 
You know, Natasha has such an exceptional shimmer formula that I don't feel blown away so far. This is my first wear. And normally with her shimmers, I'm like, yes, yes, super creamy. Normally her shimmers, I feel like you pick up so much of the product. They're just so extremely creamy and pigmented. I don't feel that way with these. I feel like I have to definitely dig in a little bit more and you might like that. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. If you're not into the super pigmented creamy shadows, this might be for you. And it's not that these like pigmentation, it's just she has better, if that makes sense. Anyways, across the lower lash line, I'm going to take, again, some of Relief right here. Run this along the lower lash line. I had to try some of Vigor. This one is also very pigmented. I don't like the way that this looks, but it's fine. <laughs> um, I'm going to take some of Tranquil, which is a light shimmery pink color. Just kind of add some brightness here. And lastly... Just to tie the look together, some of flow. So this is my first look. Like I said, honestly, I'm really, I'm not into this look. It's kind of ugly. I don't want to go on camera with it. I don't regret doing it though, because I feel like I got a good feel of the formulas and you were able to see how they applied. Let's go into the real tutorial of the pretty look. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this second look I am much happier with. I wanted to mostly focus on the cooler tones because these can be harder to formulate. So, you know, I had to do my investigative research. We're going to start off with Calm down here. Calm is a cream to powder formula. So you can kind of see it's already starting to get that texture in here. And I'm just going to use this as my transition color. As you can see, I did add those pinkier, corally, more elements in there. So I do want this to go kind Kind of high just to peek through okay we're going into mantra this is the number one shade that i wanted to try because it's a cream to powder formula and the nature of this type of shade is always a mess always really hard to formulate and natasha nailed this formula she even in previous palettes had in this formula a similar color and it was not good not good at all so yeah much better now you get a lot of pigment if you want and you have to be very careful with this i'm using a refer number 14 brush place it down first and slowly work out the edges little by little you don't want to go too ham with this because too much blue on the eyelid not placed strategically can look really messy and not well done you know a little bit tacky so if you work slowly and are very strategic about that placement it's gonna look really good you don't want to overdo it. So I'm adding a little bit more of Calm, working on blending these edges. Even then, I think I went a little bit more ham than I intended. Focus that here. We'll build on this color later. I'm going to leave it at that for now. I also had to go into Equilibrium, and this feels really great, really pigmented. Not super creamy, but quite creamy. And I have to say, I'm a little bit underwhelmed by this shade. I feel like it doesn't adhere to the lid very well. I just felt like on the other eye, I had to keep going and reapplying it and really working on pushing it into the skin so that it adheres. Like you can see, it's, it doesn't have the shimmer that I was expecting or the reflex that I feel like Natasha Denona is known for. And I feel like I have to keep reapplying it to get the depth that I want. But now that that color is down, I'm gonna blend those edges out more so that there's a little bit more cohesion here. So we're very, very blue. It's not as multi-dimensional as I wanted. I wish this shade did have some more dimensions, some more sparkles, because I feel like when it applies to the eyelid, it's just flatter than I would want. It's not as metallic. And you might like that, but I'm talking about the deception in the pan, because this looks like it's going to be quite metallic, but it, it falls quite flat in my opinion. Anyways, let's keep going here. <laughs> I wanted some pink to pop through here, so I'm going to take some of Relief. This is a color that I know I'm going to use a lot in this palette, because I feel like this is one of those transitional colors that will look good with both warm looks and cool looks. So I'm going to use it right here in the inner corner, and then also in the inner corner of my lower lash line. This is a really beautiful shade, the perfect level of pigmentation. I'm gonna take some more of Calm just to tie everything together. But I think the fun pink and blue is really cute. So now I'm going in to Tranquil. You can see this relief shade does have some kickback to it. And Tranquil, again, while it's really gorgeous, 
I guess because this is the Zen kind of palette, it's not as crazy as and reflective as her palettes normally are. But even this, you can see, it's just not like, it's too soft for me. Because Natasha Denona, for me, is like wham bam glimmer shimmer. I'm not getting that with this. But I know some of you will like it. It's not that it's bad quality. It's just not what I was expecting from her. Okay, continuing onward, though. We're going to take, again, some more of Mantra. This is one of my favorite shades in the palette. Really impressed with it. I also feel like this palette, I just want some more bright, glimmery shades. Everything is starting almost at more of a mid-tone, with the exception of this shade. This is the only brightening shade, but I feel like for my skin tone, I do need to dig into another palette to get kind of those highlighted tones. Now, if you are more of a medium to deep complexion, that won't bother you as much, but just for me, looking at into what I feel I need. I'm missing like something really bright and shimmery to bring this back to life. So I'm gonna finish the rest of the look and I'll be back. And here is how the look finishes off with some lashes. It really pulls together with these lashes and a little bit of some peachy hues in the lips. I think it pulls everything together. I mean, overall, if you couldn't tell from my vibe of those tutorials, I really wasn't super in love with this palette. I didn't like the curation of colors here for my personal preferences and style of makeup. And I think what disappointed me most about this palette were the shimmers. And the shimmers are not bad. That's the thing. I don't want you to think that this palette's bad quality. It's not. It's just not what I like about the Natasha Denona formula. You'll even see I pulled out the Metropolis palette just so you could kind of compare how the shimmers look in the pan. You can see the reflectiveness of the shimmers in the Metropolis palette versus that of the Zendo palette. That metallicness is not there. So if you don't like metallic shades, then you actually might really like this. But for me, the metallic glittery multi-dimensional shades from Natasha Denona are what makes me love the brand and what makes in my opinion Natasha Denona's quality and price worth it and the fact that this is missing from this palette doesn't make me love this palette I feel like it's just a regular palette that I can get from other brands what makes Natasha Denona special to me wasn't included in here the shimmers are fine quality the mattes are really great in fact I'm actually quite impressed with the cream to powder matte formula here, which is actually probably the standout formula for me in this palette. But the shimmers, I just feel like Natasha Denona can do better and she didn't put that better in here because I think the majority of Natasha Denona fans, we love how thick and creamy metallic the shimmer shadows are. You just pick up so much of the formula on your finger and you get exactly what you see in the pan on your eyelid. With this palette, I felt like what I saw in the pan was not what I got on my eyelid. All of the shimmers seemed to kind of dull down as they mixed in with the mattes, which I didn't love. So that actually might be the reason that you'll end up loving this palette. It just depends on your preferences. But I will say, if you're on my side with the formulations as well, don't expect to be blown blown away by this palette. But if you don't like a crazy shimmer, then this actually might be the palette for you. It wasn't the palette for me. Not every palette's going to be a hit. I wanted to be 100% honest with you guys. And even the color story, I just find to be a bit of a challenge for myself to create a look that I really like. So I'm gonna continue trying to create looks with this to see if I can create something that I would love. I think if I create a look kind of sticking more to a true side of the palette, that I would be more happy with this palette. But the fact that I've had so many problems and I'm feeling uninspired and not excited about this palette, I think should say a lot. So, I mean, you won't be disappointed with the quality, but if you're like me, you might feel like something's missing. And that's how I feel. I just feel like something's missing from this palette. So I'm going to stop this video here. I hope you guys enjoyed this review at the very least. If you picked up this palette, let me know your thoughts down below. Do you agree with me? Do you feel similar to me? Do you completely disagree with me? I would love to hear it. And if you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.